Hey guys, so I'm going to teach you how to do some real life problem solving with scale drawings. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to understand how area and perimeter are impacted by scale factor. So go ahead and get out your binder, turn to the math section, and let's get ready to take some notes. So we learned in the last lesson that similar figures have the same shape but are different sizes. If the shapes are different sizes, that means that in similar figures or in scale drawings, the area and perimeter are going to be impacted by the change in dimensions. And that dimensions word just means length times width. So let's jump right in with an example. It says the PTA created a back to school backdrop and snapped Polaroid photos. The Polaroid photo measures three inches by four inches. That's the dimensions of the photo. And that's shown here in this picture. They determined that the scale is one inch for every 1.5 foot. To solve this problem, we're gonna be using proportions and using our scale factor as one of those proportions. So go ahead and take a second, use one inch for every 1.5 feet and write that as a fraction or a ratio of inches to feet. Press play when you're ready to check. So I wrote one inch for every 1.5 foot. You could write it the other way and write one and a half feet for every one inch, as long as you have this set up as a fraction, because this is a ratio. Anytime we have scale factor, one inch equals 1.5 feet, like we have here, we have a fraction and that scale factor Fraction is going to be proportional to a new fraction. The new fraction that I'm looking for here is the dimensions of the actual backdrop. It tells me the Polaroid's backdrop. It tells me its width and it tells me its height. So I'm going to need to find both of those. I'm going to need to find the height and the width. I'll start by finding the height. So you set up a new fraction and you put in the information that you have in the right box or the right spot on this, the numerator or the denominator. So I have a height of four inches. So I need to put that four inches in either the top or the bottom part of the fraction. Take a second and think about which part of the fraction would you put four inches? You would put that four inches on the top because it has to match with your other fraction. And in the scale factor here, we put inches on the top. If you wrote it where inches is on the bottom, then you would put inches on the bottom. It just has to match going across. So we're solving for a missing value of the actual feet dimensions of the height. To find that missing box, I need to use cross multiplication. So take a second and see if you can remember how to cross multiply across and then divide by the number that's left. When you get that, you should have your answer. So I got six, six divided by one is still six. And then I made sure I put feet because that is what the dimensions are in for the actual backdrop. They're in feet. So you want to make sure that you label and it should match with the one going across from it. So six feet is the height of the actual backdrop. Let's go ahead and solve now for the width. So I'm writing this in the same spot, but you can write it over here off to the side. I'm looking for the width. I'm still gonna use the scale factor. That's gonna stay the same. The scale factor is one inch for every one and a half feet. So that scale factor stays the same. And I have some information for my new fraction. I know that the width is three inches. So I need to plug three inches into my new ratio. Take a second and see if you can figure out where three inches goes, on the top or on the bottom should realize that it goes on the top. Inches has to match with inches. If you put inches on the bottom, it would have to match on the bottom. So you just go with where it matches in your scale factor. However you set it up, it'll work both ways. So now we wanna solve for this missing value underneath here. We wanna find this missing part of a fraction. When we do that, what do we do? We cross multiply. So you multiply what you have across from each other, and then you divide the number that's left outside of that. So three times one and a half divided by one. Go ahead and do that now. I did that and I got four and a half feet. That would be the new width of our picture. Next question is asking how many square feet does the backdrop cover? When a question's asking about square footage, what's the question asking about? It's asking about the area. It's asking about how much is gonna be covered by that. That's like the carpet in a house or like with the picture inside the picture frame. How many square feet does the backdrop cover means find the area of the actual backdrop. So you need to use the formula for area of a rectangle, that would be length times width. You have the length and the width of the new rectangle or the height and the width, uh, however you wanna put it, the base and the height, and you can multiply those to find your answer. Go ahead and do that now. After multiplying, I got my answer 27 square feet. That's how many square feet the actual backdrop covers. Let's go ahead and look at part C. Ralph looks at the problem above and states that the solution should be 18 square feet. Explain what he did and why he is not correct. Take a second, think about that. See if you can figure it out and then press play whenever you're ready to check. 
All right, if you don't know yet, I'll give you a hint. He did something with the original photograph, the smaller version of it. He did something with the area, and he did something with the scale factor. See if you can figure it out. Press play when you're ready to check. All right, so let me tell you what Ralph was thinking. So good old Ralph here is looking at this problem, and he says, we can go ahead and if, if we can multiply the actual height and width, we can multiply the height and width in the Polaroid and then multiply by the scale factor, right? So we can take 4 times 3 and get 12 feet squared or inches squared, excuse me. That would be the area of this Polaroid. And since it's been multiplied by a scale factor, we can take that and multiply it by 1.5 feet, right? He says that's how we got 18. But you just found that the actual area of the backdrop is 27 square feet. You cannot take the area of this small thing and then multiply it by the scale factor. You have to do it the way that we did. You have to multiply the width and the height by the scale factor. That's what scale factor does, is it changes the length and the width. That's how you get a different area. So it doesn't just mean multiply these and then multiply the scale factor. Do each one separately and then multiply their, um, their new dimensions together to get the actual area. So this is something that I might write if this was a constructive response. So if you want to, you can take a second, pause the video, and copy this down. Okay, so let's look at the next part. And let's see, again, how perimeter and area are further impacted or affected by using scale factor to find new dimensions. So this is an example of where a floor, a floor plan for a studio apartment measures 9 inches by 6 inches. This is the floor plan. This is the blueprint. The scale listed on the floor plan is 2 inches for every 7 feet. So two inches on the blueprint is actually going to be seven inches in real life. And using that consistent scale factor, the scale drawing is going to be able to be proportional to real life. That's how you can uh, make predictions about what kind of furniture you can put in this room. So you're going to sketch the floor plan and then calculate the actual size of the apartment. Take a second under floor plan and go ahead and draw you a rectangle with dimensions of six by nine. So here's what I drew. It's just a rough sketch. I just drew a rectangle. The width is six. The length is not. Make sure that the nine inch side is longer than the six inch side and it's a rectangle. So before we draw the new actual size apartments floor plan, let's go ahead and use the scale factor to find the dimensions of the new apartment. We're going to do that by setting up proportions. So go ahead and take a second and write this, this uh, scale factor as a ratio. For every two inches, there's seven feet. Write that as a ratio and then press play when you're ready to check. All right, so I wrote that as there are two inches for every seven feet. This is a ratio of inches to feet, and that ratio represents our scale factor, and that's given to us here. Now, what I'm looking for is the actual size of the width and the length. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I know that this is a proportional relationship since they're similar figures. That means I need to draw a new fraction out. So I need to write out a new fraction, and I have some information. Let's start by finding the width of six inches. Let's go ahead and plug six inches into this new fraction. Does it go on the top or does it go on the bottom? The six inches is going to go on the top of your fraction because it has to match with the inches on the other fraction. So in the scale factor, I wrote inches on top. So I'm going to write six inches on the top of my new fraction. Now on the bottom, I don't have that dimension. I don't know how many feet it is in real life. That's why we write this as a fraction. So we can solve this using cross multiplication. So whenever we do that, we multiply the two numbers we have across from each other. So 6 times 7, and then we divide by the number we have left, 2. So take a second and do that. Press play and you're ready to check. And I got 21 feet. Remember, that's corresponding to the 6 inches. So this side here should be 6 inches. So take a second, and you might want to draw the new rectangle. It's going to be the floor plan of the actual apartment. So take a second and draw that and go ahead and label the width as 21 feet. So it should look something like this, because this red side is corresponding with that side. All right, so now we know we need to find the length of the actual apartment in feet. Here's a mistake I see people do all the time. They'll take nine times two-sevenths. They'll say, okay, two-sevenths is the fraction or the ratio. Let's go ahead and multiply it by nine. That's wrong. You can't just multiply that by nine because if you do that, you'll get like a 2.5 number. When you do that, you are not understanding what's happening here. It's a proportional relationship. So I want to make sure you understand that you have a scale factor of two inches every seven feet. It's not two sevenths times nine. You actually have a new ratio where the nine goes into it. You're solving for this, not nine times that whole thing. You're solving for this missing value underneath. So what you do is you cross multiply. 
So you write it in, a, you set it up in a proportion, and then you cross multiply. Seven times nine, and then you divide by the number that's not circled. When you do that, you get 31 and a half feet. That corresponds with that length. So in green here, those are the corresponding ones. So I know that this is 31 and a half. And also know this is 31 and a half because this is a rectangle. So the question is not asking just for the length and the width of the room. It's asking for the perimeter and the area. So take a second and remind yourself what perimeter means. And then take a second and remind yourself what area means. All right, so you should have thought about it and realized perimeter is all the sides added up. It's the distance around the object. If it was a yard, it would be the fence around the yard. So perimeter means add up all the sides. Area is the space inside of an object. So it's the length times the width or the base times the height. Let's begin by finding perimeter of each of these shapes. So I know that a rectangle has two sets of sides that are the same. If this one on top is nine, that on the bottom is nine. If this over to the left is six, this one to the right is six. And then I just want to add those up. Take a second and do that now. I did that and I got 30 inches. Remember, it's not square inches because it's just adding up the lengths. It's not finding the space inside. So it's not square inches. It's just inches. Now let's take a second and find the perimeter of this shape. Pause and press play when you're ready to check. All right, so one thing I see people do a lot of the time is they'll take 21 times 2 and then add that to 31 and a half times 2. That works because you know there's two sides that are the same. Either way you do it, you'll end up with 105 feet. So the question that you'll start getting asked is how many times larger is the perimeter of the actual size apartment than the floor plan? And when it's saying when it says how many times larger, a question like that is asking you to divide the 105 divided by the 30. And you end up with three and a half. And that's where the scale factor comes in. Seven divided by two is three and a half. So that's just something that you're going to start getting asked. I want you to just make that connection and realize that. And we'll look at that here in a second again when we look at the area. So now we want to find the area, which is the space inside. That area is going to be found by taking your base times your height. And you do it for each of these objects. So let's do it for this drawing. Six times nine. I got 54 square inches, and this time you do put inches squared because it's the square inches. It's the space inside. Same thing for this new shape, 21 times 31 and a half. And you get 661 and a half square feet. Pretty good size apartment. Again, you might get asked about how many times larger is the area of the actual size apartment than the floor plan of the drawing of the apartment. The area has been affected way more than the perimeter. Notice how much bigger 661 is than 54. So the square footage actually got changed. And you can find that dimension by dividing it. When you divide those, you see that 12.25 would be how much bigger the area is. So the area got impacted a lot more than the perimeter. But that pattern is something that you're not expected to exactly know right now. What I want you to know exactly how to do it's how to take an original drawing and then multiply by a scale factor using proportions so you can get an actual size for a shape. We do this all the time in real life with pictures, with blueprints. If you're any sort of artist or engineer or construction worker, you would definitely have to know how to do this. All right, guys, that's it. If you made it to the end of this video, please put in the comments, what are the dimensions of your phone? Now, mine gives me three numbers when I look this up. Because there's a added dimension. There's a length, width, and a height because this is a 3D object. However, that little width of the phone is about 2.28. So I'm more interested in what are the dimensions of the length times the width, the two bigger numbers. Mine is about 5.44 times 2.64. All right, so today we learned about problem solving with scale drawings. So now you should be able to understand how area and perimeter are impacted by scale factor. So now you should go back to the calendar and complete any other assignments you have left for the day. I'm going to have any questions. Bye.